If you've ever tried to start your chainsaw, or any other two-stroke engine for that matter, and first and foremost, it just won't start, and then you check your air filter, and you find that there's lots of fuel around. And sometimes the air filter's wet, and you can see fuel inside when you look towards the carburettor. And in some cases, it's even dripping out of here. Well, in this case, your chainsaw is most certainly flooding. And all that's meant by flooding is that there's too much fuel coming up through the carburettor to be presented to the engine. And the engine can't combust this increased amount. It's way too much for it. Or the carburettor is providing an efficient amount of fuel, but the spark plug is not sparking sufficiently in order to combust the fuel that's presented to it. And so the fuel can just build up and back up towards the air filter. And in some cases, it can also be seen coming out of the exhaust. So importantly then, can we fix this issue of flooding? Well, firstly, as we've already seen, there's more than one cause of flooding. And secondly, yes, it of course can be rectified. But it all depends on what exactly is causing it. This video is about outlining some causes of engine flooding. In no particular order, let's start with the choke system itself. One quite common cause of engine flooding is when the operator mistakenly leaves the choke on for too long when they're trying to start the chainsaw. As we know, we need the choke on initially from cold, and in some cases we need to prime the carburettor. But usually, after a few pulls of the starter pull cord, the engine will fire, and at that point, the choke needs to be removed. That means that the choke butterfly, or the choke plate, that was closed, restricting air coming into the carburettor, and so allowing a fuel-to-air mix, where this mixture is rich in fuel, in order to get the chainsaw started, or fired, initially. Then, once it has fired, removing the choke means to open the choke plate, and allow more air to come in through the carburettor, and mix with the fuel, so that the fuel-to-air mix is leaner than it was when the choke was applied. Otherwise, the more rich air-to-fuel mix caused by the choke being closed will be too much for the engine to handle after it has initially fired. And therefore, all that will continue to happen if we keep pulling the cord is we're going to keep filling the cylinder with fuel and the spark plug will get wet because the spark cannot ignite liquid fuel and it will continue to flood the engine the more we pull the starter pull cord. And eventually, we will see fuel backed up to the air filter, and it's at that stage we know it's definitely flooding. But this choke plate being on for too long isn't always down to operator error. I have known it where the linkage between the choke lever and the choke itself is somehow disconnected and the choke is left on, but the operator has of course shifted the lever into the correct position, and so they think that the choke is now off when it's still on. And so the same thing happens as we pull the starter pull cord. We just get an increased amount of fuel going into the engine and flooding. And another reason can be just the operator using the choke when it's not meant to be used. So what I mean by that is, when we initially come to the chainsaw and it's cold, it hasn't been used, we do need to use that choke from a cold start. But when we've used the chainsaw and the engine's warm and then we stop the chainsaw for a few minutes, but then we start it up again, we don't need to use the choke at this point. And sometimes I've known operators use the choke every time, even when the engine is warm. So in the case of this hot engine, the excess fuel will just cause the flooding. Another cause of flooding that I've come across, quite a few times actually, is when the operator mistakenly hasn't turned on the on-off switch when they're trying to start it. Obviously, it goes without saying that if the switch, of course, isn't in the on position, then electrically the spark plug can't possibly fire. And so attempts to start the chainsaw, pulling and pulling at the cord, will bring in fuel into the cylinder, but that fuel will not get burned. It won't combust. We haven't got a spark to ignite the air and fuel mix. And so with the fuel still being provided to the engine, but the engine not using that fuel, then it's just going to build up and up and up. And normally, by the time the operator realises what they've done, it's a little too late. There's quite a lot of fuel inside the engine. And at that point, we've got flooding. Now, the next one is something I do see a little more often. And that is bad fuel or stale fuel. Now, the question is, can stale fuel cause flooding? Well, I do know that chainsaws will start and run with fuel with some level of staleness to it. 
But what we've got to remember is that stale fuel does not have the same combustibility as fresh fuel. Because in essence what's made it stale is that the reactive part of the fuel, the highly combustible part, has evaporated into the environment, out of the fluid. And so that's why the liquid left behind is much less combustible. And so when we're using this type of fuel, of course the carburetor will be delivering this fuel in its usual way to the engine, but the engine won't be able to combust an inadequately combustible fuel as much as it would a fresh fuel. And so because of this, there's a tendency for the fuel to stay in the engine because it hasn't been burned, or at least a certain portion of it hasn't. And this potentially can lead to flooding. Right, so another cause I wanted to mention is a clogged air filter. Of course, the air filter is there to allow the air from the environment to pass through it, minus as many small particles as possible, which it obviously captures to stop them going into the engine. And of course, over time, these particles build up and up and up on the filter and eventually restrict that flow of air going through it. When this gets so bad, the problems that can occur are in some ways similar to how the choking system works. Because recalling how the choke works, when it's closed, it restricts some air coming in through the carburetor and this results in a richer mix of air and fuel, which again we need to get the engine fired initially. And so, in some degree, a clogged air filter does a similar thing. It restricts the air coming in, and this makes the air-to-fuel mix richer in fuel. And in some cases, too rich for the engine to run correctly, and it can lead to flooding. OK, so moving on to deeper causes of flooding, such as carburetor failure, let's take a look at some of the things from within the carburetor that can possibly cause flooding. But it's important to mention, I'm not saying that these are all things that can cause it. OK, so some things from within the carburetor then that can cause flooding include the needle valve, which can be found in the metering system of the carburetor, behind the metering cap here, once these four small screws are removed, and then the metering diaphragm's removed. It's a good idea to take a good look, making sure that the lever and the spring and the metering needle are first of all all present and correct, and that when you push down on the back of the lever it's returning OK back upwards, and see if anything looks untoward with just a quick visual check. Then if all is present and correct, we need to make sure that the metering lever is set correctly. Because an incorrectly set lever can possibly lead to flooding. Generally, this lever should be in line with the top of the carburetor body. And we can test that by getting a screwdriver from one side to the other and making sure that the top of the lever is at the same level. But there are other types of small two-stroke carburettors like this one that do have a different setup in the metering chamber. And you can see the metering lever on the lower level. In this case, the back of the metering lever needs to be level with the base of the bottom of the metering chamber. So why do we need to set these levers this way then? Well, in general, we need the diaphragm to lower just enough to lower the back of the lever just enough, to raise the front of the lever and the metering needle just enough, in order to meter the correct amount of fuel through this carburetor for the engine. But if the metering lever is set too high, then any movement downwards from the diaphragm will act upon it much sooner, in most cases way too soon. So the lowering of the back of this lever will cause premature opening of the needle valve allowing fuel through when it's not required. Basically messing around with the metering system so it's not working at its best and metering the fuel, the correct amount of fuel that is, for the engine's needs. So this may lead to too much fuel delivery for the engine and in turn may cause flooding. So if we do remove the metering cap and the metering diaphragm and see that the lever is too high, then we can simply reset it by pushing down on the front here, holding it there, and then pushing down on the back to re-bend that lever. And if you find you've pushed it down too low, you can always put the screwdriver in at the back here and lever it back up slightly. And we can simply build the carburetor back up and refit it to the machine and try it at this stage to see if it's any better. If not, then it could be the metering needle not seating correctly due to the spring being incorrect or damaged or there's dirt preventing a good seal for the valving system of the needle itself and therefore allowing fuel up when it shouldn't do. 
These parts, of course, can be replaced and they can normally be found in a full service kit for your particular machine's carburettor. But how do we know if a leaky needle valve is causing the problem? Well, the way the professionals do it at the service centres is that they pressure test them. So they'll place the pressure tester on the carburettor's fuel inlet pipe and pressurise air in, up, behind the needle valve. Usually around £7 per square inch for a small carburettor like this and when this air has been pumped in, that particular pressure should easily maintain itself. That is of course if the needle valve is down fast on its seat creating a good seal and preventing any of that air from escaping upwards past it. But of course if we see that needle dropping down from 7 it indicates that the air is indeed passing this seal. The needle valve isn't sealing properly. And so as we touched on earlier, the sorts of malfunctions that can occur to allow this leak up of pressure can range from the actual valve not sitting in its seat properly due to debris, so it's not creating a seal. Also, this rubber part of the needle valve does in time wear away. So this is the needle out of my carburettor, and if we take a look at the rubber tip, if this needle needed replacing, showing wear here at the tip, then we'd see a very thin ridge going across the tip, right about here. Very much a ring of indentation all the way round. It's this that's a common indicator that the needle valve really does need replacing. On some brands of carburettor, it's the other way round, where the needle is made of the solid metal type material, and it's the seat that carries the soft rubber part. But again, the needles and seats should be in a full service kit, should they need replacing. Also, something that is overlooked quite a bit is that this spring at the back of the lever pushes up at the back of the lever to push down at the front and push the needle valve into its seat. And it's down to the correct strength of this spring to make that needle create a good seal. Of course, we don't want it too strong because we need the diaphragm to push down on it and push back on the lever and lift the needle when it's required, but we don't want it too weak. If it's too weak, then any pressure coming up here to the needle valve will find it easy to push the needle valve upwards by going against the spring. So in the case of losing pressure, we might need to consider fitting new parts. So using a pressure tester is how the needle valve is tested professionally, and it really is the best way of doing it. And now for the last thing I wanted to mention in this video, another carb issue that can cause flooding that I've found is fairly common is incorrect fuel adjuster screw settings. Usually when a chainsaw comes into me and the owner has tried to adjust them themselves without really knowing how to adjust them. Not that adjusting them is particularly difficult, but like anything else, in order to do it right, of course, we need to be shown the right way of setting them. But showing you how to correct these screws is a video in itself. So rather than me go on for too long here, I've placed a link in the description below of one of my videos showing you how to reset these. And so, like I've said, I've covered a few reasons here, but they may not be all reasons. So if you've got other reasons for chainsaw flooding, then please do put them in the comments below, because everything you put in there is helping the whole community. And at that, I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.